Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm finishing up the hammer review series with claw hammers. We have ripping hammers or straight claw framing hammers as well as traditional claw hammers with a sharper more curved claw. We have fiberglass handles, we have one, por one piece forged steel and of course a variety of hickory handles. We also have a variety of some of the more common brands such as Stanley, Vaughan, Estwing, Husky, and a couple of off brands. There is a wide variety of hammers, and recently much more expensive titanium head hammers have started coming into popularity. And that's one of the reasons why, is due to the physics, it's easier to have a lighter head on a really long handle and be able to swing it faster to imbue more kinetic energy rather than having a heavy hammer that you swing slowly. But there's also personal preference. And in demolition situations, you do want to have a, just an outright heavier hammer with a heavier head because you need that extra momentum, that extra mass to help push and knock pieces of wood and all that kind of stuff. Now, hammer weights are measured by the equivalent head weight is what I call it, and they can go as low as 6 or 8 ounces, all the way up to like 30 or 32 ounces. The general range tends to be uh, 16 and to 20 or so. Maybe 14 ounces. Lighter hammers tend to be smaller, and heavier hammers tend to be longer. Especially for framing. A lot of framing you just do want a nice long handle, so it's easier to pull boards and apart and etc and having the extra leverage as well as just having a nice long handle so you don't have to be quite as close to the nail you don't have to bend down over quite as much and even though you have extra weight of a heavy hammer you're swinging it less times to drive whatever nail you need to drive or knock apart whatever you need to knock apart now the big deal between say framing ripping and traditional claw hammers is framing and ripping hammers are about the same the term ripping has to do with the angle of the claw and most framing style hammers as you can see on this table we have 14 hammers here and almost all of them are would be considered framing style hammers with the straight claw so they're easier to get against a flush surface and get in between boards and pry them apart and if you need to pull nails you don't have quite as much leverage because the fulcrum points much different but usually these claws and they don't all work great but like on this husky it's really sharp and you just jam it onto the end of the nail and then you pry it sideways to help pull out the nail with one uh, hammer of this style. Now traditional claw hammers are like this, so they have a much steeper claw. That makes it harder to pull boards apart because the hammer has to be at a real steep angle and it's hard to actually get the teeth to get in between the boards and so you want a straighter uh, claw for those situations. But if you're pulling a lot of nails, it's surprising how much better this works. It's because the claw, if we look on this side, the V groove where the nail would stop is actually pretty far up on the claw. So if we're right here and we're on the nail, then we have this large curvature, which provides us a leverage ratio. And it does make it a lot easier just to pull nails. And so they're kind of nice to have one of each style, and especially one that's a traditional claw hammer uh, when you have to pull a lot of nails. Although that's kind of hit or miss because more modern framing hammers such as this S-Wing have a very long handle. See we have a standard S-Wing that's like a 16 or 18 ounce and then we have a long 22 ounce framing hammer. And as you can see we've got about two or three more inches on the handle and a significant amount of extra weight. And oftentimes that extra length on the handle more than makes up for the curvature of a traditional hammer. Because it always seems that when you get these large framing hammers, they're going to be rip hammers. Handle materials do vary. It's traditionally a hardwood, such as hickory. We have one-piece forge, which S-Wing is really known for, but we have uh, Huskies here, as well as Stanley anti-vibe versions, and we'll get into those. One of the more, mo I wouldn't say modern, but it is a development in the last couple of decades, is integrating using uh, one-piece forge steel hammers. One of the big criticisms is that they vibrate more and the natural wood handles are vibration dampening. Same thing with these fiberglass handles. Fiberglass uh, is hit or miss for people. Um, I personally not really had many issues. It seems really early fiberglass handled hammers. They didn't have the epoxies put together well. 
And now in the last, since the 2000s, they've been really, really durable and they are very light handles, um, very low vibration. And they give you the same type of effect of one of those $150 titanium hammers of having very little weight anywhere else except for on the head of the hammer. Then you just get one with a light 14 or 16 ounce head so you can swing it fast. And you have near the same effect as one of those really expensive hammers. Now the, now the tuning fork ones really do work pretty well, but I'll get into that in a minute. Let's start off with the one piece forged handles, the S-Wings, which have been a great hammer. Here's an old one, and I personally use the beans out of this, this, and this Fat Max. I've uh, uh, definitely paid a lot of bills with these hammers. And they really do hold up well. That's what's really nice. We can look at this hammer. It is many, many years old. I've pounded a ton of nails with it, and the head just seems to go on forever. But the criticism was a lot of vibrations. And the kind of way they're designed, if you hold it up right here and you're striking hard, the resonance kind of focuses right here, and it can be pretty bad. Where these are designed more to hold closer to the end of the handle, and I'm not exact—I don't know exactly the physics, but it is much less vibration when you hold it here versus when you're holding it up here, especially for hard strikes. Also, earlier versions of S swings, they really wanted to make sure that they didn't have handles that came loose, and in this situation, uh, it's absolutely true. This handle is stuck on. Uh, as it was the first day of the factory, even after being well beat up. But they may have a pretty hard material, and that's kind of hit or miss. It is more durable when it's harder, but it transmits more vibration. And let me get that out of the way. These are more modern S-Wings made, say, in the last 10 to 20 years, and they're still a nylon handle. I believe they're nylon. and But it's much softer, and it really transmits a lot less vibration. And I haven't taken one, cut apart one of the handles on these newer ones, but they may also use a tuning fork design, which is simply splitting the steel and having the mass tuned so that when you hit a nail and the vibration goes up through the hammer, um, it is dampened and absorbed by the two forks that are in there rather than transmitting it to the rest of the, hand, uh, the rubber and thus your hand. The one other comment that I'll make about the One Piece Forge steel hammers is, that of course, they're very heavy duty. But you have this where there's a lot of mass in the handle, and that takes away from the amount of mass that is on the head. And so I haven't weighed these, but there's only two ways they could do that. They either measure, say this is a 20-ounce hammer, of really what the equivalent mass of the head would be against a hammer that just had a standard head, or they're partially compensating for the amount of weight where this head may be a uh, an 18 or a 16 ounce, and then there's 2 to 4 ounces of additional weight that goes along with it. Generally speaking, I think it's the former or that the head weighting is what they rate it for because these always tend to feel heavier than an equivalent uh, head weight. Say a 20 ounce S-Wing seems to be heavier than a 20 ounce wood handle hammer. Now, the nice uh, one piece forged steel really is uh, very heavy duty, but uh, they require a lot of energy to swing. I definitely have to admit. But these new ones really are very low vibration. You do have an excellent grip on them. And I really like using this style for demolition, knocking apart, uh, you know, doing remodeling where you're knocking out 2x4s, except cabinets, that kind of stuff. It's really nice just to have this nice steel hammer um, because often when you're knocking stuff apart, you're missing or it goes through something and it's always hitting somewhere along this beam and then that steel beam just gives you tons of extra durability so they're really great in very heavy duty situations oftentimes in many service and mechanics you need a claw hammer just because they're so useful for not only their hammering but having a nice integrated pry bar in there too and they work great in those situations the only one comment i have to make about the s-wings uh well here's the good first they've more modern hammers they've started coating with the plastic coatings so that are less likely to to rust and they have been sanding the beam so they are shinier but being one piece forged and a, being a long handle oftentimes the the beam is not straight now you can see on this one it's pretty darn nice let me take a look at this other s-wing this one's actually pretty good too let's see if we can't there we go maybe a little bit of bending but sometimes you'll run into these one-piece forged ones, and it will be significantly bent. And it gets kind of annoying once you notice that. And you will notice it when you're hammering, because you're hammering straight, but the head is kind of 
going off to one side or the other. So I do always recommend making sure that you have a straight beam. This is a slightly older S-Wing. You can see where they have the raw finish from the forging. They didn't sand this one, but it's still the same quality. It has this little hook. And what this is designed for is when you go on a 2x4, it allows you to twist and pull and adjust dimensional lumber, the standard one and a half inch or two inch unsurfaced. And it's kind of handy because you can get a, uh, some kind of a stick or a stud in there um, and then easily be able to hook onto it and adjust it. Uh, it's not super common to see hammers with this, but once you have one that has this little stud adjustment hook, you kind of find that you use it a little bit more often than you think just to because you can and it's convenient and then you can get things to line up a little more more precisely but that's exactly what this hump is and what kind of sets it apart from all these other hammers and one of the nice things that you can do with a one-piece steel hammer is integrate all sorts of additional functionality which is very difficult in any other fiberglass or wood handle design let's talk about some of these little funky ones these are just small ones it's nice to have a variety of hammers here's a small 10 ounce uh, here's a, a stubby hammer this is a performance tool uh, this thing is kind of funny. I've used it just a couple of times. Of course, when you're holding it up like this, this close to the head, you have almost no force on it. But being so short, and it's kind of funny they sell these at like auto parts store, is just the nature of the hammer head. Uh, having a small uh, tool to be able to tap bolts out and you know various utility uses, uh, it's actually pretty handy. Now it has, you know, it's a Looks like it's a fiberglass handle with a rubber overmold, or maybe the overmold is pressed on. But that's one thing I did want to mention: is on really cheap hammers, they may be steel, but then they'll have a handle that's kind of pushed on. Those can be dangerous. I've seen oftentimes really cheap hammers that have some kind of rubber overgrip, and that's what it is: is an overgrip, and it really wants to slip. On a stubby hammer, it's not a big deal, but on larger hammers, it's something to be aware of. And hammers are really cheap. Home Depot has some good hammers, and I bought a couple from them mainly because it was closer than my house and it was uh, pretty easy to deal with. They also have a lifetime warranty on, I don't know if it's all their hammers, but many of their hammers. Uh, and it was very surprising. I actually had one of these, where, and this is a replacement, where I had been pulling, I can't remember what I was pulling apart. It was some pretty tough nails, and I ha it had slipped, and for some reason I don't know exactly what it was, a defect in the metal but it actually broke the inner part of one of these claws off and they just replaced it for me. So that's one thing I wanted to mention. Otherwise, it seems to be a very heavy duty hammer. This has a unique kind of head design where it's a half moon with a flat so you can get closer to uh, walls and those kind of surfaces and I kind of like that. Uh, it makes it very handy because there's many times when you have nails that are very close to some type of surface and using any type of round head, you have to basically hit you know, right on you know the center point you have to be almost perfect where having this nice flat makes it a lot easier so that's one thing to look out for and generally speaking these huskies are pretty high quality this is a modern one it has extremely low vibration and i thought it had an innovative handle design these are through holes so these things end up being real squishy and when you grip it it kind of forms a a corrugation as well as kind of like little air pockets for vibration reduction and fatigue reduction and it actually works really well. You really, not just a rubberized grip, but having those uh, through holes where it indents, you really have a solid grip on this hammer. So to tell you the truth, I overall, I like it, except for I had one where the, one of the teeth kind of broke, and it just didn't seem to make sense to me. That's why I just write it up as a some type of defect, because claw hammers tend to be the most durable of just about any hand tool. And of course, we have a more traditional one in wood. Generally speaking, I would recommend a wood handle hammer. There's probably not a lot of people who are going to be watching my channel who don't own some type of hammer. But if somebody's coming across this video and makes it this far into it, definitely recommend uh, a wood handle because it's traditional. They're pretty easy to replace. Even if it breaks, many uh, just make sure you get one where it's not glued. These are actually wedges, but when it breaks, you just drive from the broken end. You just drive the handle through that or you can dig these out and it's not really so bad and of course you can just go down to a hardware store uh, and get a new handle and put it right back in and use the same old stakes and that's one nice aspect the other nice aspect of hickory is that it is very good at reducing vibration although the wood can get a little slick af 
after, especially after a great deal of use. And you do sometimes have issues where if you overstrike, where you miss the nail and it hits the back of the head or the handle, that it will chew it up and eventually the handle can break. Of course, it's susceptible to uh, water and getting rotten. But a good old wood handle hammer is really hard to beat. Oh, and this is our lightweight one. This is just another design. The Husky has a little texturing. Vogue hand uses kind of a hexagonal design. Um, and they're not bad. Uh, although I will have to say that the Vogue hand tends to be the cheaper versus S-Wing and other brands. Maybe, uh, I would say they're around the same quality as the Stanley. Um, but they try to have manufacture as many of their products uh, in America uh, where they were founded. And I do appreciate that. So occasionally I do buy one of their products to support them. That and this was a traditional claw hammer and I actually happen to need one. I was going to make a part of this video where I was driving nails, but I realized that's really difficult to really show. I don't have the equipment to show, you know, the differences in vibration. It's really empirical how fast you drive a piece of nail into a piece of wood. Um, obviously, going through a bunch of hammers, driving a bunch of nails, uh, I would be getting tired. So that would throw issues into it. But at some point, I'm going to figure out a way or maybe even do a video like that, but, you know, take good pauses. Uh, just to give an idea of the of how fast you can drive, uh, say standard framing nails with different style or and di particularly different weight heads of hammers. We have Stanley hammers, and Stanley has really gotten a lot better. We have these Fat Max as well as more traditional ones. I don't have any wood handle Stanley hammers, but they've really gotten into the well. Excuse me, I shouldn't say wood handle, but uh, more vintage style. Uh, Stanley hammers all these are more relatively modern at least made in the last 20 years but it's really nice Stanley has really set them tried to set themselves apart in the at least the construction uh, tool industry by constantly trying to uh, try out new products and the nice aspect about it is you end up with this big variety so you for, with one company you know you can get a, a pretty reliable product and uh, choose exactly what style you like Fiberglass hammers are pretty cheap. They tend to be the cheapest of the Stanley hammers. Here's a couple of them. One's a really cheap one. That would be this Dyna Grip. And then we have uh, a slightly more expensive one. It's a little heavier. We have a 16 ounce and we have a 20 ounce. And one thing you really notice is like the balance point. That should be something I could show here. It's a right about two in. Well, I have, to, I have to use two fingers, but it's about two inches in from the head. If we take this S-Wing, actually that's not bad. The S-Wing's balanced just about at the same point as a fiberglass hammer. I've never really done that before. On this 20 ounce, the heavier head does make an obvious difference. We're much closer to the head. So on a heavy hammer with the fiberglass, almost no weight is in the handle. And it really delivers the force well because most of your energy is at the outward moment is what I believe it's called or basically the end of the hammer a, more, a higher percentage of it's at the end of the hammer where it's traveling the fastest giving you the highest amount of kinetic energy I do like this style because this has a really small hand grip and I really do like hammers with small hand grips I did buy this to use so my name is not Jerry I have not discovered what my true name is yet um, and I really like the overmolded grip. I think this is really kind of innovative. They have a real heavy, it's actually a really aggressive texturing. So this holds into your hand well. And with the fiberglass, there's almost no vibration. Uh, it's just, a, uh, it's really long-term longevity. It seems to be what the issue is with fiberglass. It seems to eventually get little cracks and just starts to fatigue and get damaged, especially after lots of heavy duty use. Uh, and eventually the handles either come loose or break but certainly not any worse than wood. And usually they've been overstruck and the, this area of the head's really chewed up as well. But I do generally recommend fiberglass handles. They're really not that bad at all. And we'll put these down. I don't need to take anything else to make space. We have a very large and very heavy. This is a 22 ounce. So this is almost a pound and a half. This is one of their large fat max framing hammers. These are pretty common where they have a special kind of angle so you can get some extra. It's basically two, hand, two handles in one or two hammers in one. You have one style here where you can hold it up closer to get nails started. 
And then once you go, it has this nice flare and this nice angle, so you can really swing it with a ton of force. One thing I forgot to mention was the difference between smooth face and waffle face hammers. We'll bring out these S-wings again. Now, a lot of framing nails, and let me get one of those together here. Uh, the framing nails have this. They have a little textured pattern, so when you're hammering, if you happen to use a quote-unquote a waffle face, then it kind of, if you're not straight on or you're at a glancing blow, the waffle face and then this integrated uh, hashing on the head kind of prevents the hammer from sliding off. It's really uh, kind of a, I would, it's not, I wouldn't call it a marketing gimmick, but it doesn't really work. I mean, it's only temporary. Um, almost no hammer, these little dimples last very long. Just the nature of pounding on steel nails, even if they're soft, um, it's many, many impacts. And if you really use your hammer, uh, it'll end up as a smooth face. The other issue with these waffle faces is, of course, when you miss, you have a really nasty mark. It's not just a smooth indentation. It has this waffle in it. And so they're traditionally used just for rough framing because if you miss, it doesn't matter on something that you're covering up. But my point, and perhaps the S-Wing will hold up better, but this is a nice Stanley 22-ounce Fat Max. I've used this a lot. The handle's really taken quite a beating. But you can see the waffle face on this, and I personally done this. This had a waffle face that was brand new, and it is almost completely pounded smooth. So this waffle face is now serving <laughs> no purpose. So you know you're paying a little bit more money for a manufacturing process that uh, goes away. It's consumable, and really you could do this much wear on a hammer like that. Uh, a professional framer would do that in a month two months and it would be as smooth as this hammer right here. So why not just get a smooth hammer to begin with? And that way you don't have to worry about over strikes. And the, the deal with it catching a nail and preventing it from slipping is almost nothing. If you're so bad or so far off on the nail or at such a bad <laughs> angle, um, the hashing is not going to make any difference. The nail is going to bend or you're going to knock it over or slip off the end of it. Otherwise, these nice, long, heavy-duty framing hammers are great for demolition because you just have so much force. It's like a small sledgehammer. Great for pulling nails because even though it's a ripping hammer and this, the Fat Maxes have a really straight claw, you have this huge handle. give you tons of extra leverage for prying stuff apart and uh, demolition. The large, heavy head and the long handle is great for knocking studs out a couple of three strong hits and it just rips them right out of there and I would always recommend having a hammer it's really nice to have or one of these long handle framing hammers uh, when you want a hammer that has a bit of extra force uh, you would be surprised and a lot of times this does especially um, uh, it does perform well against titanium head hammers um, in situations where there's like you're nail, nailing nails on roofing or something like that, situation where the substrate is flexing some, that you're not just delivering a sharp impact, which can be reflected because it's acting like a spring. Something with more mass and more momentum will push back uh, through some of that springing force and actually drive the nail further and a little faster. Definitely not true when it's a more solid surface. The best way to equivalent it would be like having a bolt threaded into a spring and a small impact would just get trapped and trying to twist the spring and not have enough energy to carry over to actually start unscrewing the bolt once the spring twisted up and tensioned enough for the bolt to come loose. But if you use a heavy impact, it will impact and have enough inertia to carry itself through making the spring tight and then have some energy left over to actually uh, unthread the bolt. And that would be the same situation for just having a traditional uh, heavy head hammer. So the last series is these Stanley Anti Vibes here and I wanted to spend a minute talking about these. They were the first ones to really patent or I shouldn't say patent but really engineer I should say. Really put a lot of effort into designing the tuning fork uh, anti vibration. And the reason I'm hesitant on that is because uh, S-Twing has been doing the same thing, but they don't use a fork, but they have been uh, focusing on where the vibration occurs. Meaning that on the S-Wings, I have talked about where if you choke up, hold close to the head on the hammer, 
uh, it seems that the vibration is concentrated, but when you hold closer out to the end, you almost don't feel that. And Stanley makes a big deal about the anti-vibration, but the S-swings are exactly the same thing. Both this and the S-swing feel very similar. If you're holding it like this and pounding hard, you'll feel vibration. Uh, and after a long time, that will get frustrating. If you make sure to hold it close to the end, it's amazing. There's a lot of vibration right here. And just holding your hand right here, you almost feel none. Sometimes, and in many hits, you don't feel any vibration at all. It's really surprising. We have a couple different generations. We have an older, I believe this is the older one. This is the newer one. And these are really both the, the Fat Max Extreme. And if we look, they're both 51, 165. So I thought that was kind of interesting as they have a first and a second generation one. And to tell you the truth, I believe this is the older style, and it actually seems to feel better and have a little bit less vibration. One, And I say that because this one, if you hold it where it's choked up and you hit, there's actually like a, it sounds like there's something loose. There's a very odd kind of uh, rattle, or, and that's the best way to describe it, somewhere in the handle, where this one doesn't have the issue. The other thing is I like the older one where it has a more traditional style head. This one they tried... Uh, they both have, you know, uh, provisions to hold nails. I forgot to mention that. But many hammers have these types of slots cut out with a little neodymium magnet and a little shoe place that holds the nail. And the idea is you're supposed to take the nail, get it to stab in, and then drive it. I never had good luck with these things. And if, after, if you do have good luck with them, it'll only take a little while before it starts to round out the little hook place. And then inevitably the nail slips out anyway. So I always kind of thought... It was slightly gimmicky. Only every once in a while do I ever use those magnetic holders. But I was going to point out that the second generation has this kind of odd cone-shaped head design. And I think it's fine, but for visual purposes at least, I do like the older style ones. And this last one here is a Fat Max version, but with anti-vi, but it is not the extreme. And it's a little bit odd. Uh, uh, I was mentioning earlier Stanley has a lot of products, but it's getting a little extreme when you have Stanley Standard, Stanley Fat Max, Stanley Fat Max Extreme. And I would certainly hope for the extra money that you're paying for uh, a better grade of steel because it just doesn't make sense. They're both, I mean, these between this Fat Max Standard and this Fat Max Extreme, even though this is a 14 ounce, uh, they're like the same hammer. This one had, both of these have big AVXs in them, even though this is also an anti vibe. Similar style handles, so I it's kind of hard. The one thing that this is missing is the little nail magnet, which I was just saying really doesn't work out as well as you would uh, initially think it does, at least for me. Uh, they are having a bit of a hard time telling me why I should pay extra money for these Fat Maxes or for the extreme versions when the standard one looks like it's the same thing and even has better coloring. It's an all black handle with this nice stamped and then in. Uh, they put the color painting right into the Fat Max there. Anyway, that was the end of my really long hammer video, or claw hammer video. Wanted to get some nice detail in there. And don't worry, this is the end of uh, my hammer collection and the hammer reviews. We'll move on to some new tools in the next video. Once again, I want to thank everybody for watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus.